Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're solving 163 missing ranges. You are given an inclusive range lower upper and a sorted unique integer array nums where all the elements are within the inclusive range. A number x is considered missing if x is in the range lower and upper and x is not in nums. Return the shortest list of the ranges where ex that exactly covers all the missing numbers, that is, no element of nums is included in any of the ranges, and each missing number is covered by at least one of the ranges. <clears throat> so we're given this example here where we have 0, 1, 3, 50, and 75, and the lower value is 0, and the upper value is 99. So obviously there's some values missing here if we want all the numbers from 0 to basically 100. Obviously, between 0 and 1, we're missing 2. Uh, sorry, yeah, nothing's missing here, my bad. Uh, from 1 to 3, we're missing 2. From four, uh, from 3 to 50, we have 4 to 49. And then from 50 to 75, we have uh, 51 to 74. And then obviously, after 75, we also need 76 to 99. So let's now think about how we want to code this problem. And as we saw um, from the example, we actually saw two of the three cases um, where a range can be missing. The first case that's missing is um, between two numbers, right? Uh, this is the case where, for example, you know, between um, 50 and 75, we're obviously missing uh, the numbers 51 to 74. We can also have um, missing at the start. So in this example, the first value was the starting value. Uh, so there was nothing missing. But in theory, say this was, you know, five instead, then we'd obviously be missing from zero up until five, or I guess up until four. Um, so that's the other one. And then we saw how it can also be um, missing at the end, right? Missing at the end. And we saw this here where after 75, there's nothing. So we need basically 76 to 99. So these are our three cases. And, you know, let's just handle them as they come up. So the first thing we need to do is actually check whether or not um, we were given an empty range. Otherwise, if we don't have any numbers in our nums, then everything is missing by definition. So we're going to say n is going to be the length of nums. And our solution here, which is missing ranges, uh, is going to be a um, empty list, right? So now if n actually equals to zero, so if we have no numbers in nums, then obviously we're missing all of the numbers from lower until upper. Uh, so we simply need to say missing ranges dot append. Um, I guess we don't even have to do that. We could simply just say return um, lower upper, right? We need to basically just return. Um, actually, it needs to be a list of lists. So let's just do list. Okay, cool. So basically, we just return all the numbers from lower until upper. So that's the kind of base case when we don't have any data. Uh, let's just close this to give us some more space. <clears throat> now, let's just go over um, and check whether or not um, we're missing numbers at the front. So we're going to say if lower is actually less than nums of zero. So our lower bound actually is before whatever the first number is that means that we're missing numbers from the front. So we need to say missing ranges dot append. We need to do from lower up until whatever the first number is. So we're going to say nums of zero, obviously minus one, because we already have that number at nums of zero. We don't want to do it again. <clears throat> so that would be that case. Now we need to basically just check all of the pairwise um, uh, numbers. So for example, we're going to pair each one up and see if um, there's any numbers missing. And the way that we're going to determine if there's any numbers missing is whether or not um, the difference between two numbers is one. If it is, then obviously those are just the two numbers together. But for example, here where we have three and 50, obviously the difference is 47. So that means that there's some numbers missing. So if the difference between two consecutive numbers is greater than one, um, then we know that we're missing numbers. So let's check all of these pairs. So we're going to say for i in range from n minus 1, because we're going to be basically checking the next number. Uh, so we don't want to have an out of um, bounds error. So we're going to say if nums of i plus 1 minus nums of i, if this value is actually less than or equal to 1, uh, then we're OK, because we know that there's no numbers missing. Otherwise, we have a missing range. So we need to say missing ranges append. And we want to append here basically nums of i, so the current number plus one, because we already have nums of i. So we want to get the next one up, up until basically the next number minus one. 
Uh, so nums of i plus one uh, minus one. And if we kind of go back to our example where we have um, 50 and 75, obviously the gap here is greater than one, it's 25. So we get basically the lower bound plus one, so 51, and then the upper bound minus one. So that's how we get the 74. Okay, so that is the handling the case where it's missing in the middle. And now the opposite of what we did in the beginning, we need to just check at the end, to see if there's any missing ranges. Um, so what we want to do is we want to say if upper is actually greater than nums of n minus one, so greater than the last element, uh, then we need to get all of those missing ones. So we're going to say missing ranges dot append, and we're going to append basically nums of num uh, n minus one plus one up until upper. And that's it. All, oops, uh, all we have to do now is simply just return our missing ranges and we're good to go. Let's just make sure we didn't make any mistakes. Looks good. Submit this and we are accepted. So time and space complexity, uh, relatively straightforward. All we're doing is basically parsing this array, comparing two pairwise elements. So realistically, this is going to just be big O of n, uh, where n is the is num is the number of nums in I guess nums actually because um, it's actually called numbers, um, and then the space complexity. Obviously, we need to store um, all these missing ranges, and then the amount of missing ranges really just depends on the data. So the space complexity here is also uh, going to be big O of n. We could have potentially a lot of missing ranges, and that just depends on the input, but it's just going to be linear. So that's how you solve this problem, relatively straightforward. I think it's usually a pretty good warm-up question at Google or um, Meta. So hopefully this one helps you, and yeah, hopefully you learned something. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave it a like and a comment? Otherwise, subscribe to the channel for more videos, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.